good morning. You're joining me on my commute to work. And I was thinking at the weekend about Nintendo. I love Nintendo. At least, at least I think I love Nintendo. I grew up with a, a Nintendo Entertainment System, the grey box style one here in the UK. I remember opening my Nintendo Entertainment System on a Christmas morning and it had a combined cartridge of Super Mario Bros. 1 and Duck Hunt and a zapper. And we wired it all together and it was it was just the best thing ever. Up until then, I'd, the only computer access I'd ever seen was uh, BBC Micro. Which was no, no problems there, but this, this was, it was fast and colourful and it made noises you'd just never heard before. And it, it had a big orange gun in the box. It, the, the eight year old me was, was very, very excited. I remember we got to the end of Castle 1.4 and that took some real trying. It, it's, it's weird because now you, you'd think, oh, anybody would know how to do that. What's, what's the big deal? But back then, you know, you just, you'd never seen a game like this before. It, it just had, it was all new and novel. And you thought, surely this, this system is not capable of delivering anything else. You know, after we get to the end of 1.4, that's got to be the end of the game. Um, were we in for a shock when there was another seven worlds? And I remember when I first discovered my warp zone and, and of course, I have a lot of nostalgia for it. And, you know, that makes me think, oh, I really, really like Nintendo. And I used to love my Nintendo. Every Saturday and Sunday morning, I would be playing it before walking up to the shops and or getting on my bike. But it was it was always there. And I used to love collecting the manuals. And I'd, I'd go to as I got older, because uh, I think I had I got the console when I was eight years old, perhaps maybe a little bit older than eight. Um, but I I kept playing it until I was about fourteen. Um, so I'd go around all the car boot sales and local thrift markets and try and find the cartridges. And they, you know, they were like 60 pence for Mega Man 1. I remember, distinctly remember, 60 pence for Mega Man 1. You look on eBay now, the prices are you know, start, starting to shoot up uh, for some of these cartridges. Anyway, uh, I then went on to get a Super Nintendo, the SNES, as we call it in the UK. And I got a, a second-hand one uh, that came with came with Theme Park, and it didn't come with Super Mario World. I had to borrow that off a friend. Anyway, for the snares, I had uh, yes, Theme Park, which I, I, I thought was fantastic. This is the the, the nerd in me was starting to escape at this time. Uh, and I didn't really have many action games, but I did have two games which uh, might make a few people envious. Now, the first SNES game I actually bought for myself, I got from Woolworths in Welshpool, of all places. And there was a big red box by all the computer games. I thought it was a novelty display item, and it wasn't. It was the Super Metroid box. And they just had loads of them. Nobody was buying this game. I, I, they must have had a, a marketing problem or a budget problem. But anyway, I picked it up for £11.99 and I thought it was the absolute bee's knees. It was fantastic. Uh, I loved the moodiness, the atmosphere. I liked the fact that the I wasn't very skilled at games as, as a child. Maybe I'm still not very skilled now. Um, but I loved the fact that it was accessible, uh, but also challenging as I got older. And I got another game uh, from Argos, and they they were having a sale on. And this one I, I remember was seventeen ninety nine. And you might remember the games games back then were about the same price they are now. You were forty pounds for a cartridge. And anyway, this 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 Argos game was Secret of Mana. Uh, so yes, I have a completely intact Secret of Mana. I even have the poster that comes in the box and the user manual and and and, and everything. Um, I've seen this on eBay for over £100 now. I'll never sell it, because uh, Secret of Mana, to my shame, is one of those games I just have never got round to finishing. So I loved my SNES a great deal. It always smelt funny. It was a second-hand one. Um, but I never had that many games for my SNES. I'll, uh, I'll put up a list of my games somewhere. Ah... 
we go, that's a standard Monday morning commute as we grind to a halt. I wonder how many people will look in the car and go, why has he got a camera? I was very excited for the PlayStation 1, and I don't know why. I think it was because it was it was pitched as a grown-ups console. Um, and, you know, you're at that age where obviously you are super mature and nobody knows anything better than you. And so I thought, you know, I'm a grown-up. I need this grown-up console. And you couldn't order stuff online back then. And we went into town and we went to Dixon's and we picked up the, uh, the Sony PlayStation, my mother and I. And we picked up the PlayStation with Crash Bandicoot. And that was that was that was game changing. The 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 clarity, the colours, the the music, the the fact that it had a loading screen. It was frustrating, but slightly slightly odd because you felt this is this is different to what we've had before. This is this is the future. Here we are. There's loads of data here. The, you know, the amount of resources and assets in these things is going to be super. You know, my friends were buying Nintendo 64s. And I think this is where Nintendo started to go wrong. Let's put aside for a minute all of the handheld consoles. I did have an original Game Boy, and I went on to get a Game Boy Color, which uh, is a bit underwhelming. At some point, Nintendo, a designer at Nintendo, decided to carry on making their consoles look like children's toys. And the N64, the Ultra 64, as we all knew it and were waiting for it to come out, um, looks dreadful. Maybe that's that's controversial, but it, it was awful. And I think the controller, the Trident thing, was, was awful too. Now, I know there'll be many gamers say, actually, no, the ergonomics of that controller were, were the best for for playing Mario 64 and Goldeneye and, and Ocarina of Time. And I'm not going to, to argue with that I don't have enough experience to, to make that criticism. But I didn't like it, and I, I thought that it looked like it looked like a toy, bright, girish, plastic colours. Whereas the PlayStation, and to some extent the Saturn, the Sega Saturn, they looked like things you could put under your television. Uh, they looked like things that weren't embarrassing on my uh, maturing young man's shelves. You know, the, the toy box was hidden in the loft. You, did, you, didn't, you had your friends around, you said, hey, check out the latest consoles and look at my latest games. You didn't, you didn't sort of open the toy box and start playing with Playmobil and, and Lego at 15 years old. And so that's when I, that was the last Nintendo console that I, I bought. Which makes me a bit sad because I've often felt I've missed out on the Mario games. And Super Mario Bros. 1, two and three will forever have a place in my heart as being just superb games. Mario Brothers 2 takes a bit of getting used to, but actually in its own right it's not a bad game at all. But Super Mario Brothers 3, that's, that, that was just super. It still is. You fire that up and it just oozes quality. And it's the little details of it that you, you stick, in, stick in my mind, certainly. Um, you know, all of the games, well, most of the games you'd have played on the Nintendo Entertainment System up until that point had the synth synthesized chip tune sounds, and Mario 3 had the uh, the steel drums at the side. It was playing samples in the audio in the background, and just sounded on a, a different level, looked on a different level, scrolled on a different level, and introduced explorational gameplay uh, with depth. It wasn't it wasn't just go down a pipe and collect the coins. It was go down a pipe and perhaps there's something else hidden in this room or there's a puzzle to solve or you don't know where it'll bring you out on the map and you could move in all directions on the map. And, and so I, I, I wonder, because I, I did enjoy Super Mario World on the SNES as well. I think uh, because I didn't spend much time with it, that's why perhaps it doesn't rank up there as, as one of my favorite games of all time. And I, I, I've only ever briefly played Super Mario 64 um, because I didn't own the N64. I had to go around to a friend's house who did and of course, at, at that age, really all you did was go around to your friend's house and watch them play their computer games. Likewise, when people came over to mine. The last Mario game I played was Paper Mario. And I think that was for the GameCube, but I was playing it on a, on a friend's uh, Nintendo Wii. I didn't like the Wii. I know it was tremendously popular. 
but I don't like waving my arms around to play a computer game. You know, I, I appreciate Nintendo got some marketing bods in that said, hey, look, we can sell this as a fitness accessory. We'll sell millions of them. And, and fair play, they did. What a great decision. But I don't want to jump around my living room. That's why the Kinect was never going to be something I wanted. And the PlayStation Eye toy. And it seems all the games developers jumped on the jumping around your room bandwagon. And that wasn't for me. I liked to sit on a couch, usually with a cup of tea, playing games until I physically couldn't play them anymore. My body said, you have to get off this couch. Ah, uh, Final Fantasy. That fella's registration plate looks like it says Yakuza. Hmm. Now I think how a console looks has been a deciding factor on how successful it's been. Uh, the GameCube, to be fair, didn't look too bad, but it was still, well, the ones that I saw were still a purple cube. Again, bright, garish plastic colours. Even this generation, the PlayStation 4, looks like a set-top box. Whereas the Wii U, I, I mean, come on, Nintendo. And so that brings us to the Nintendo Switch. And every time Nintendo release another console, I get excited thinking, oh, maybe I should get this and I can play the latest Zeldas and the latest Marios and you know, maybe they'll release a good Metroid for it, a good 2D side-scrolling Metroid, please. Um, and so I get very excited about it. But I just I can't see the Switch being something which will have such a profound impact on my life as, as other consoles have had. Again, Nintendo have gone for, let's go for something which isn't technically as powerful as our rivals and rely on our branding. So we're definitely going to release another Mario game. We're definitely going to release another Zelda game. Nintendo do make quality games, but it really seems that they're, they're running out of original ideas. I, don't know, I think the, the price for the Nintendo Switch is, is fair enough. They've had to miniaturize some, some powerful technology, get it into a, a, a tablet form factor. I mean, don't forget, you're, you're buying a tablet here. How many, how many high-end gaming tablets can you buy? And I can understand some people have been a little bit revolted by the cost of the controllers, the controller being a third the cost of the, the gaming unit itself. I will say this for Nintendo, at least they've tried to make gaming the focus of this console. Yes, it's a tablet and yes, it's portable, but you can play games on it and it comes with a fairly standard control. It's okay, they can clip onto the side and you can move them around, but they're, you know, that's, there's no extra gimmick, there's no extra widgets required, you don't have to fasten a controller to your ankle and swing a lasso around your head to press the X button, or the A button. But it does make me think this, why are Nintendo not just pushing their games on other people's systems? Why are they still in the hardware market? And I believe this will be down to an old-fashioned board at Nintendo who have looked at the history of Nintendo and said, look, we've shifted millions of units of Nintendo Entertainment System. We've shifted millions of Game Boys. We've shifted millions of DSs. And we shifted millions of Wii. Well, actually, yes, okay, they did shift millions of consoles. But really, did they shift millions of copies of Mario and millions of copies of Zelda? And perhaps we're entering that age now where Nintendo will just become a, a software manufacturer. And we see this with the Super Mario Run release for tablets and phones. Clearly they're not averse to licensing their franchises and their IPs to other platforms. In fact, they've been doing it all of their existence. I think the next generation of consoles will be so similar that it really won't matter. The, the consumer could just buy any, it will be generic games machine that sits underneath your television. 
and you subscribe to a particular software ecosystem that that games machine can play, be it through streaming, be it through downloads, I think the physical media will disappear entirely. Gamers won't want to then buy two or three very similar looking, similar performing machines. They'll just want to buy the one. And they'll settle on the one that has the most games. And if Nintendo, if that's not you, then you're going to be finished. So I would say ditch your hardware and keep innovating with the games. If you can keep up the quality, the level of polish that is applied to your games, uh, you'll, you'll be fine. <laughs> generations of children in the future thinking, you know, Daddy, Daddy, what's Nintendo? And you'll say, well, they used to be this amazing games company. Now they release apps. Very sad.